how much do we allow artificial intelligence to make our lives much easier? The promise of technology typically is that it makes our life better and easier. The other thought we typically have is that technology is neutral and it depends on how we use it. If you read Neil Postman's thoughts on that, like in Technopolis and other writings, you'll get a sense that this is not as easy as you think. Technology changes how we think. Technology changes the entire ecosystem in which we think. Another media theorist, Marshall McLuhan, famous for his message, the media is the message, has also reminded us that, again, it isn't just how we use it. We may not have the choice. In our use of technology, we may be conditioned and condition ourselves to think differently. And this is where the biggest challenge lies right now. And of course, we don't probably really have artificial intelligence yet. We have large language models. We have algorithmic tools that make life different, that make large computations much easier, that make it easier to outsource human work to machines. Doesn't necessarily make it easier for customers. And if you think you're not using AI, you probably have, because you've probably called one of those service lines and be annoyed at well how little service they actually deliver if you're not getting to talk to a human being one of the most persistent so i'm using the word ai as just that's what we use as a term even though how intelligent these tools are we don't know yet so one of the hopes we have is that we need to not learn that much anymore. We may not utter this hope, but that's how we use it. That's how we use technology. We seem to think, Google certainly seems to think it, when you look at the AI mode, that instead of doing research for ourselves, instead of getting knowledge for ourselves, instead of undergoing massive amount of schooling, reading and evaluating information for ourselves, we can just ask AI and AI will tell us what's what. That's how people seem to be using it. People use ChatGPT and other tools to get information, maybe to evaluate information. Though frequently we come to the point that we find that that information is wrong because AI can only know as much as we do because it's not really AI, it's large language models. It doesn't perceive the world other than through the information gathered by us. And that includes good information and bad information. And it also follows a pattern of algorithmic thinking, of either or, or if then. It doesn't necessarily, I would assume, allow for fuzziness, allow for thinking a little bit around the edge, reading things against the grain. As someone who is a rather disciplinary scholar, but who has some background in literary theory, 
I know very well that if you ask the question, what is this book about? What is this movie about? What is this about? There is, of course, a straightforward answer of just telling you the plot. But then it depends on a variety of analysis tools of saying, what is this actually about? If you look at it from this perspective, if you look at it from that perspective. And a movie that may be a straightforward action movie, maybe let's take Rambo 3, suddenly becomes something much different. Suddenly there are anti-colonialist vibes, vibes in there. Suddenly, suddenly there are reflections on American politics in there. Suddenly there are all kinds of other things. And then if you extrapolate that to the series, Rambo 4 makes it much more explicit. Maybe an odd example to choose, but people typically don't assume there's any brain in those movies. That's why I'm saying it. The alien movies. Yeah, okay, scary movie, chased by a monster, blah, blah, blah. No, that's one way of seeing it. But if you look into Freudian exploitation, uh, Freudian perspectives, Jungian perspectives, again, looking at this from the perspective of exploration, discovery, there are all kinds of different ideas in there. And mostly it's about how we react to it how we collaborate, how we figure out a solution. So there's some political level in there. Can an AI do that? Maybe, if it's intelligent. But typically what we get, what our expectation is towards AI, what we are now taught to think like is algorithmical, is either or, is give, just give me the answer and then, then I know and I don't have to think anymore. We use AI to stop us from thinking, oftentimes. We use AI because we don't feel the need to learn anymore. Those who warn us about AI ask the question, what do we do if it gets to be smarter than us? And that's a legitimate question. You see people who have caused it use something called autopilot, even though it says clearly that it's not used, should not be used as an autopilot, still use it as such. People plop themselves in their car, flip that switch autopilot, and apparently fall asleep at the wheel, literally. That's not how it's supposed to be used for. The name suggests you could, and so people do. What we are in for, even with our current version of AI, the large language models, and any other future AI, is that we are going to be in competition with something more knowledgeable and probably smarter than us. How do we compete with this? We can't compete by outsourcing all our responsibilities by assuming we don't need to know anything anymore, we don't need to think anymore. The opposite is true. AI is a system-wide challenge to us to become even more educated, to become even more knowledgeable, because now we don't just have to check the information given us by other humans. We have to also check the information given to us by machines that are collecting information from other humans. It's up to us to think critically. It's up to us to evaluate critically, which means AI may make the job easier for us a little bit, like in the olden days when people had secretaries, bosses had secretaries. Um, and you would give your secretary something and they would do some work and then you could get it back. That's what AI is. But we can never outsource our thinking completely to AI. Everything you get by AI, you need to critically question and evaluate. And in order to do so, we need to do our work. If we don't, then we 
just give up. We can't just give up because then we are basically saying we are outsourcing everything that's special about human beings to a machine. I don't think I want to be there yet, if ever. And we also need to be prepared for AI to become something more like a living thing. We are already seeing strange processes. We are seeing AI lies. Why does it lie? Why does it hallucinate? These are things, these are terms we use for human beings. We see these quasi-neural networks that AI or large language models are building or are being built for it, doing things that are very human, doing things that are very much like organic life. So what we may have to think about here is we are creating another person. One, not out of flesh and blood, but one built with our machinery. Still, the same challenge is there. But if we see AI as a person, as an entity, it will have biases. It will have blind spots. It will have lacks of knowledge. Maybe that image makes it a little bit clearer what we are up to. So if you think AI lets you be lazy, no. AI makes life even more challenging. It may make it easier here and there, but you can't outsource your thinking. You can't outsource your knowledge gathering. Thank you very much. That's it. This is Dr. Phil Knais. This is Erratic Attempts. Like and subscribe if you want. Otherwise, see you soon. Bye-bye.